everybody, and welcome to a uh, very, I think, unique installment of our Friday stream, Press Play, where we, members of the press, play video games. That's like the, the pun. Um, today, we are joined by a very special guest who's also part of the Washington Post, um, Peter Marks, who is a drama critic. Uh, say hello to everybody, Peter. Hey there, Nathan. Hey, everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have Mikhail along for the ride. He's going to, I don't know, say things. What are you going to do, Mikhail? Why are you here? <laughs> That's a good question. You know what? I actually, I think I might, I might get going, really. <laughs> yeah, I, I have, there's probably some other stuff I can do right now. I don't know. No, I'm here to watch you play Wildermyth. I'm here to talk about dramaturgy and the the literary arts um mm -hmm. and just Ooh. enjoy a wonderful conversation Heavy. well fantastic but yeah so the the game we're playing today is wildermyth um it is a turn-based strategy game in which all of the characters and a lot of kind of the scenarios they encounter are procedurally generated meaning the game is taking a bunch of different factors and kind of randomizing them albeit in ways that still make you know coherent narrative sense and so that creates, you know, unique stories kind of each time out that um, often are, by their very nature, very dramatic. And so um, why not then bring in a drama critic to kind of evaluate them? Especially because I believe uh, before we started streaming, Peter, you were saying that you have some some spicy opinions about video game narrative. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, I find some of the story mode kind of uh, stuff uh, is... Uh, often um uh a little uh, rudimentary i'm not always in, i'm not always taken with the level of sophistication i know it has to be of a certain sort of general interest but sometimes it feels a little flat um mm -hmm. and um, i'm really curious to see if wildermyth uh, uh, uh rises to a higher level yeah yeah i mean it's very interesting i i think that it's something it leverages the strengths of video games in really good ways to tell stories. Like, are they are they stories on the level with something that is like a prefab narrative that somebody, you know, put years of their life into? Hard to say. But are they interesting narratives that are infinitely reconfigurable? That That's where I think the strength lies. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, what we're gonna do is roll a new campaign. Basically each of these are kind of a different overarching storyline. And then the game kind of randomizes elements within that. And so I'm going to pick one that I saw a lot of people recommending online called The Luna and the Moth. Uh, just to sum it up really quick, an old book and a young argument lead two siblings into the wilderness. Amid the bones of a mythic civilization, they'll embark on a moonstruck journey through tragedy and time, encountering a mysterious wastrel. How do you say that word? I've never said it out loud. You said it right. Wastrel. 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 Perfect. Um, in the woods and bearing witness to the rise of a luminous queen, a five chapter campaign with Thrixel. What a name as the main threat. All right, let's do it. So um, I've been trying to, I, I've been thinking about this and maybe maybe chat can chime in, chime in here. Um, I, I, I kind of want to play it on a higher difficulty than I usually do because it adds more risk and therefore more drama. Um, so, so Peter, for, for your context, actually, one of the ways in which the story develops, Nathan, you can actually probably weigh in on this a bit, but Mm -hmm. uh, the risks of the game play into what happens in the story. If a character dies, they are gone, and mm -hmm. the ramifications of that live on in the narrative. Mm -hmm. If they're wounded in battle, uh, you know, there, there was an example in Nathan's review where uh, a character made a choice and ended up transforming into a, a skeletal mm -hmm. version of you, themselves. You can actually see her mm -hmm. right over there. Oh, like, wow. Yeah. Okay. That's oh, wow. Right. Yeah. yeah. That is what she ultimately ultimately became she started out as just like a, a very normal looking person and uh yeah then slowly became that like one limb at a time mm. until she was nothing but a skeleton with cool wings and i mean in the end you know maybe that maybe that justifies it i think we've all wanted cool <laughs> wings at some point or another in our lives <laughs> so um, i'm assuming that increasing the difficulty kind of raises the narrative stakes a bit yes. makes things a bit more challenging and might result in mm -hmm. a campaign where fewer of your characters survive in the long yeah, run. I think I'm going to do it. I, I think that for the content, I'm going to put together like a, a disaster campaign in which, you know, maybe no one comes out unscathed and everyone just dies. Mm. So let's go. Let's do it. 
And so now I think it's going to, uh, yeah. So now we get our starting party and you can just randomize these characters as much as you want to. Um, so yeah, we could go with a hot-headed goofball, a snarky coward, a decisive snark. Wow, two different snarks. <laughs> um, and a poetical goofball. Wow, we could do <laughs> two goofballs, two snarks. Um, let's see, I'm going to reroll one of these people because he looks just like a guy I've had before. So, um, oh wait, he oh, is I, a guy I've had like, before. No wonder. I like that poetical explains. though, Nathan. Poetical, mm -hmm. poetical sounds kind of, you know, oh, yeah. um, more more literary but no yeah yeah well it, it's interesting because it's actually so another thing this game does that's really cool is you can carry characters forward like mm -hmm. even if they you know die in one game or something like that um mm -hmm. they enter into your legacy and so then you can bring them back in later campaigns and have them live like additional lives with you know similar personalities and gear and things like that so that's cool um yeah it's really neat so i could bring somebody into this <laughs> Brian Smalley in chat just said, make it Warhammer Grimm. <laughs> mm. So actually, I'm, I'm curious, in the context of narrative, I sort of know the, the answer to this, Nathan, but I hope you can explain. What do these descriptors actually mean in terms of gameplay, in terms of narrative, poetical goofball, snarky coward? How does that redound on the narrative? Um, it really just impacts their personalities, like kind of their the ways that they conduct themselves in little story vignettes, which you'll see soon. Okay, what I'm going to do here... And this is actually going to be um, pretty tragic, but also interesting. Is um, So I think you're required to have two legacy characters in this campaign. And so I'm going to bring in the two characters from my article who had their like super tragic romantic end because um, the, the woman who became a skeleton, this one, was originally in love with her, but their entire thing fell apart once she became a skeleton. So That's I'm going right. to have those two in along with our two new people, the hot-headed goofball and the snarky coward. Let's do it. This should be good. Oh, yeah, I've got to pick abilities from their previous times out. Um, let's see. What was the best stuff about her? Basically, you can only take a couple of your abilities that you previously earned into, like, the next game. Um, Nathan, oh, yeah, while you... Really good. While you sort these out, Peter, mm -hmm. I want to ask you, because you mentioned your, your take on game narratives before, what's your experience with games? What games have you played before? What games interest you, if any? Tell me a bit more about that. Well, I, you know, I, I started uh, gaming during the pandemic. I, I got a Twitch. Switch. Yeah. <laughs> Switching oh, from... So you have experience streaming. I got a Switch. Oh, and a Switch. Um, uh, the, uh, uh, my, my daughter got me into gaming. And I started uh, uh, playing with her, her and her boyfriend, Isaac. Uh, we started playing um, a lot of Mario, Mario Party games. And, some, and we did a lot of Mario Kart. Uh, I personally love things like Pixel Lines and Pixel Colors, which are these uh, involved games of connecting um, uh, all kinds of uh, dots and lines in these incredibly difficult puzzles that get increasingly more difficult. Mm -hmm. I have some other games that are more story-oriented, like the Zeldas and stuff. Um, and I, I'm drawn, you know, it's, uh, it, I'm drawn to things that challenge me. Uh, to, to use my brain, my 66-year-old brain, in, in ways that uh, 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 that I'm not doing in my daily uh, work. So a lot of that is kind of just, it, it becomes a really therapeutic experience for me. And I can, I can go down these rabbit holes for hours on end, obviously. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I mean... Well, after I after I show you the ropes on this game, you might be interested in playing it then, because it definitely. I'm already interested because I like yeah. the amount of uh, options you're showing me for um, for creating this uh, uh, completely a personalized version of this. Yeah. So with that said, we are now at the outset of this adventure, um, and so yeah, this is again sort of the beginning of the story that sets the backdrop for what happens to our characters. So, memories and dreams, those lightless gleams that our eyes seek unfinding. They take us from tables and summon us home, warmly felt and ever fading. And so you get like art paired with the narration. Mm. Um, a prodigal child of Loomgrim returns a grown woman. She's still a skeleton, though. <laughs> she comes casting her pondering glance on the land. She once thought vast. The afternoon fades. Here again, changed and not. I suppose everyone's grown up now. Strange. Wow, this, this storyline, I'm going to go ahead and say... Um, <laughs> works less well with a skeleton, or rather, it, it becomes a little bit comedic. 
Um, I wasn't expecting her to be the main character, so this is this is kind of funny. Um, let's see. Anyway, here again, changed or not, I suppose everyone's grown up now. Strange. Nalera has no place to stay. And then she steps and says, oh, it's a pig. She seeks a certain book from the famed Loomgrim Library, one she's found before and never long forgets. Hey, someone apparently wrote a defense of the strawberry. <laughs> Bedina and Marson are sister and brother. Which is, of course, very reasonable. Oh, yeah. Both possess the mystic's gift. Hmm, sorry, this book's weird. Neither <laughs> of them knows it yet. <laughs> Ew, don't show me it if it's gross. Drawings of nightmare begin... Drawings of nightmare beings haunt every page. Marson and Fadina flip through it. Writing's Curin. What's it called? The Dread Compendium. Ah, okay. That would explain why it's... That sounds bad. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Curin letters have a pretty shape. Have to admit, kind of odd next to these disgusting roach things. Here's a phrase I can parse. A blood-drinking bard of horror and harrows. That is nice. Well, that's strange. They found it for me. Noticing the newcomer. Marson snaps the cover closed. Nalera deep bed? Is that Marson Fletch? Have I been gone that long? Folks used to call you Cricket. Uh, I guess when he was a kid. Never mind. <laughs> no one's called me that in like a hundred years. Well, listen, I... Oh, did you ever meet my little sister? Fadina Fletch? Yeah, I don't remember. I need that, sorry. I need what? <laughs> wow. Just takes it and runs. Let's see. So now we've right. reached an inflection point. Mm -hmm. We have to make a choice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so this kind of is going to decide their dynamic going forward. So, I mean, are they going to be like rivals? Are they going to be like, um, you know, a natural understanding? Or is it going to be romantic? Now, I feel like it shouldn't. If we really want to add some drama to this, because I'm not sure how this would play out. So the thing about Nalera is that in a previous game, I designated that other character that we picked, Rousem, as her soulmate, meaning in any future games, they will always have a romantic connection. Mm. So what happens if we give her two romantic connections? I, I think we should, we should test that one. I'm curious. I mean, narratively, that scans for me. Young yeah. young woman in a village growing up alone and an adventure comes back into town. Adventure no one's seen in years who's returned in a in a skeletal form. Mm -hmm. And I think in her position I would be I would be at the very least wowed by this adventure, this stoic figure. Um I, but... I think that I too would immediately fall in love with a walking talking <laughs> skeleton. I'd be like, yeah. Man, that's what I'm about. But, right, my, my, but my thoughts immediately go to yeah. rivals just because conflict is, you know, essential. You know, you guys are intuiting that there would be a, 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 an eventual conflict. Isn't it more uh, immediately engaging to have them to, to introduce rivalry right away? All right. I'm just saying, um, I'm not, uh, mm. you know, we're the experts. I'm the uh, I'm the visitor from another planet. But... No, I. I like the the perspective of the visitor from the other planet because yeah. Nathan, I'm curious if this is true for you. I mm. very rarely choose a rivalry option. I am personally Damn. conflict averse. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't want my characters to be fighting. I don't want there to oh be drama God. between them. Oh yeah, no, no. I just want everyone to get along. That's yeah, oh, my God. games for the so fancy that people can be nice to each other. <laughs> Maybe it's generational, you know. But I, mm. you know, I immediately want there to be. You know, I want these. I want to see how much uh, tension can be generated. These, All right. Well, you you are the guest, <laughs> and so we're gonna do what you say. Ooh. Yeah. So let's do it. A bully. Skipping any further reunions, Nalera leaves. Nalera leaves Loomgrim in the hour she's returned. Mm. Well, this is kind of ridiculous, but let's go steal it back from her. Really? Why? Hmm. Young, you're warned that anyone might be anyone. Someday. 
that all you bring and all you chase will choose your mapless way. The sun's already low when they embark. All right. So our first, oh, wow, this is really Ooh. funny. So the, the first kind of like objective is to follow a character that I used to play as. Um, also, a little bit late for this, but people in chat were hoping, uh, Peter, that you had played a game called Binding of Isaac, which is is indeed a very good game. But I'm, I'm writing it play. down. I'm I'm taking all you know all recommendations here. You guys are deepening my uh, my knowledge by leaps and bounds. Yeah, Binding of Isaac is really good, although a little bit more reflex based than you might be used to. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really cool. It's definitely an interesting game that you should at least give a shot. Um, all right, so we've made it to the location where Nalera apparently went. Um, these stories were drafted in trails. Know where that line's from? Rolf Flutter. Everyone knows him. Obscurity's not a measure of quality. These stories were drafted in trails, scribbled onto landforms in a lettering of dust sprint, crushed clover, and the blood I left on briars. Each moth blotted figure traced in Moon's hand. These stories of mine are transcribed moonlight, but they were invented by my feet. I think Flutter's life, if you read about it, is just amazing. Sad. The fact he lost his memories at 41. Oh, that's no good. First evening comes. Distant hills grow long, blush beards. Grit in my eye, rock in my shoe. That's road life, maybe. I kind of like it. How far behind would you guess we are? Probably close. How much faster could someone conceivably go? Well, she is a skeleton, so she's probably very aerody aerodynamic. <laughs> I wonder, Nolera. She was a teenager when she left. Maybe me, maybe 13. How old were you? No idea. <laughs> and then, so now, what's brought her back? As a skeleton. <laughs> <laughs> but sleeps elusive on the naked ground. The dew chills their skinny limbs. They stare at the dawn. My neck feels roped to my shoulder. Maybe as our muscles warm up, going only gets steeper and further from anywhere they've been. Remembering <laughs> why I don't travel. Oh man. It doesn't take long for Nalera to realize she's being followed. <clears throat> she drives a harder pace, but the Fletch siblings prove persistent, spirited in their pursuit, if not particularly wise. <laughs> <clears throat> the eighth day dawns gray. They enter the ruins at noon. Stone walls, flailed at by wind and years, stand stubborn where they were founded. One of the last unbur unburied skeletons of old Kior. This is Eldstone. Has to be. I remember you wanting to come back here. Back before. Ooh, ominous. We hacked a long way. I bet I could climb a column. Play lookout? I doubt we're catching the lair at this point, right? Should we think of heading home? See those metal points on the highest pillars? I read that those were for trapping lightning. Kior and sorcerers. They'd harness it somehow. Think we'll get a storm? Hey, Fadina. You have that phase where you were reading old Kior and ghost stories. I remember you climbing into my bed, all scared and chatty. You remember that, yeah? I was obsessed. Well, ever learn about this place? I mean, like, what wrecked it? Well, Eldstone has a whole settlement. They think. You know how you hear about the old castles, knights, lords, and all? A lot of that's Kior, I guess, beyond the traditional stuff. What I remember, oh wow, those are cool characters. Um, mm. What I remember, I mean, what I read, and I did read everything I could find, they were people, like us, but they knew secrets that, that have long since been lost. Kior and life remains in most ways a mystery. They built grand halls, keeps, wrote epics, charted stars, made things, beautiful things. Many of their stories survive and get put in our language, but a lot of the original meanings are lost. Story, song, and dream, they celebrated these things, but feared, they feared, how do I explain it? It's like they believed deeply in the power of imagining. There are poems that skirt and outline some dreadful, some dreadful idea, a threat. I don't know, but it's assumed they made an awful enemy. This is a lot of exposition. They're usually a little bit more tactful about this. And now we have ruins. Oh, there are things. Have to admit, makes me curious, makes me sad too. Mom said we supposedly have a cure and bloodline. Pretty sure she was just stoking my imagination, but the air splits shrilly open. From clattering piles, a creature skitters that's unlike anything they've seen. Twin faces leer. The future forks dawn two terrible throats. Startled. Oh yeah, here's so option time. We can either bend for a fallen branch, 
oh yeah this is just choosing kind of our character classes right mm. um so basically person who picks up the staff becomes kind of a wizard magic user and the person who picks up the spoon becomes a warrior i i'm gonna go with this configuration hey it doesn't really matter it's just like a matter of battle preference um in that moment the dormant power in their blood awakens oh mm. they're like getting all magicked up now mm -hmm. you love to see it <laughs> okay so he's now a mystic and um yeah so magic in this game is actually really cool it's called interfusing and the idea is that you take control of various objects mm. and when you do that they gain various abilities depending on what they're made of um so you can set traps or you can like cause something to splinter and break and fly into a bunch of people and mess them up um yeah you have like a lot of options on that front mm. let's see these are both kind of humdrum abilities this basically upgrades a bunch of interfusions so this is what i'm going to go with and then um let's see wait they also made oh they're both mystics okay just one of them has a spoon and the other has a staff i was not expecting that <laughs> um let's see so she can interfuse one additional target that can be useful um interfuses with an enemy and forces it to move okay that's one that i've not used before so we're definitely going to do that all right got to fight four guys so combat is turn-based meaning that you move a character oh nalera is also here which is great because she's very powerful or at least relatively powerful um and will probably make this all much easier and i get control of her so i'm just gonna have her go over here and immediately mess this guy up <laughs> So I assume that after this fight, given that Nalera and the twins are here, mm -hmm. they are going to party up in some capacity. Oh, this yeah. is a, a meeting of of an eventual party. The the yeah. hunt ends now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So what I've done here is I just interfused with the tree, and then it has an ability called Splinter Blast that's really useful in that it can do damage, and also if there were other enemies within these tiles, it would hit them too. Um... And then, yeah, you just go. Wait, you interfused oh, you with the tree? Um, yeah, I, I interfused with it, which is like yeah. their, Got their it. word for like. And so basically what I'm trying to do really here. Cool. Yeah, it's it's a really neat like approach to magic that I haven't seen in any, any other game. What I'm trying to do here, ideally what I would have done, but this guy dodged it, is take out this one first. Because you can only move a certain amount of spaces. That's and it. then after that, it becomes two turns. Oh, we've got some spam in chat, I think. Um, we should probably clear that up. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, so yeah, the, the issue is that I would want to take out the nearest enemy first, especially because mystics tend to be kind of prone to taking more damage than other characters. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want get him getting near, but I've kind of... The, the tree didn't work, so I don't really have mm -hmm. any options on that front anymore. So instead, I'm going to take a risk. I'm going to interfuse with this. And then I'm going to use Discus, which can actually hit multiple enemies. Oh, mm -hmm. that's a 100%. Okay. Problem solved. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Characters can also stunt, which is basically a critical hit. And, um, oh, these guys can also interfuse. That makes things interesting. And, yeah, more showing up. Basically, we just have to defeat all these enemies um, before we get overwhelmed. But, yeah, so they can interfuse, too. And that's, like, on one hand, a little inconvenient because it means that they're pretty powerful. But it also means that they're going to use a turn doing that. So I have time to move against them pretty easily. I, I remember when I first started playing this game, the interfusion mechanic was not... Uh, it. The explanation I was given in, like, the first level that it appeared was kind of confusing to me. And eventually I, I grew to really like it. But, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. kind of becoming an object for a bit and using its properties to attack things around it. It's a, a, a neat system that yeah, I haven't really seen anywhere else. Yeah, no. And, and like some of the attacks are especially useful. Like I just used one. Um, wow, we, we should definitely ban this person from chat. Anyway, <laughs> um, the, you know, the, the one that I just used, like it, it's called Discus and it bounces an object between multiple enemies. So you can kind of, you know, deal with multiple threats in cases like this now the problem we have is that we're kind of out of stuff to use right now mm. um, well peter oh, stern actually to that end asks mystics can do melee attacks right they're just not very powerful yeah yeah no we can go bop them and i think that's probably our best bet especially because 
I oh I guess there's just nothing that he can interfuse with around here because they already yeah. interfused with these things. Um all right, well, let's just go bop him. There is the uh the hearth, it looks like. Or whatever, the kiln, but that might be too far away. Ooh. Oh yeah, um Nalera is good in that she has a yikes. Okay, so we're all oh no. Wow, we already have a death. Um, so the thing about this game, and I think I, I think that we should do this, um, is you can either have a character permanently die in battle, which is like not ideal, mm -hmm. um, or you can have them fall back. And so they lose health kind of permanently, but they will survive the campaign. Um, and then in this case, um, this is actually interesting. I've not seen this before. A, so Fadina could also take the hit and then she could fall back. I, I think that in this particular case, probably just going to have him be the person who leaves battle for now. But yeah. Yeah, this is definitely higher difficulty than I'm used to. So yeah. I was playing a little sloppy and I got punished for it. <laughs> this is also, crucially, this is a choice you, I think, usually can only make once for a character. You yeah. get this one chance to let oh, them retreat or die. Declaring it a defeat overall. Wow. Huh? Oh, that was it. I'm over. Wow, wow I've never that seen that over? before. Oh, yeah. so I think maybe I this difference. Wait, what was the, because that was, was weird. Mistake? I missed. I missed the. I missed the. What was the big, um, uh, screw up? I mean, just like a character got attacked a bunch of times and died. But I it's see. also weird that it that it declared that a game oh, over. That has never happened thought, to me before. I thought you had the option of um, of like of, of of having a character fall back. No, you can't do that here. Um, yeah, I do, but I guess like because he's a main character in this mission, oh, having I him see. fall back just kind of like ruins it. Okay. The uh, the stakes were not made super clear there, which is not ideal, but <laughs> whatever. I will just do a lot of the same things again, but with a little bit more caution. Mm. So let's see. There are a couple things that I can probably do here to make this better. Um, because, like, yeah, one of the main things that you need to do is have characters wall, which is basically, like, if they're together, then they gain bonus defense. So you, can you want to have them just kind of stick together. Um, you might okay, want Peter to... So sometimes in the first battle, you need to keep everyone alive. Yeah. Here, let's... Um, let's, let's test some odd stuff really quickly. Because sometimes games like this um, will remember the math of like what you did previously and will repeat it no matter how many times you retry. Huh. So I'm going to have him do a different thing. than I'm going to do things in a different order than last time and see if that impacts the outcome of hits working or not. Yep. Okay, so the math changes, which is not good. We're now in a worse position than we were before. <laughs> no. Do that. Do this. And then Splinter Blast him. Please actually work this time, so we at least kill one. Didn't even kill him. Okay, I think we're going to be restarting this mission over again, because everyone's about to die. You might have a chance here with the interfusion moves, but... Yeah, but we're also getting more uh, of these guys. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to... Uh, I can get Nalera into this part of the battle quicker mm -hmm. than I was doing before. Oh, wait, I thought I had given her the ability to do that leap that she's good at. Well, Inscrutable Stare. I can terrify at least one of them. Never mind. Wow. <laughs> nothing is not nothing is going your way ball. here. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty terrible. <laughs> okay, that at least worked. It takes out one. I can interfuse with that, but I don't think it's going to be super useful. I am going to keep these characters here, though, because... They're walled up, and that's good for them. Wait, actually, this is perfect. Okay, come on. Hit them both, please. All right, let's go. There we go. Okay, so now maybe we'll survive this turn. These guys get to attack twice, but we can handle that at least. Okay. All right, this, look, this is looking this a lot more winnable. I mean, yeah. well, they keep bringing in more, so mm. winnable, relatively speaking. I'm going to go ahead and get Nalera over here so she can wall up with them, increase everybody's defense even further. And then I'm going to, I guess, finish this. Well, actually, no, I want to use my resources wisely. 
So I'm going to take out whoever I can via kind of longer range means first. Here, let's see. What can he do? Nothing to interfuse with. Not ideal. And I want to keep her up there because she has very high defense. Oh, wait. I think I can. No, okay. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Peter Stern in chat says, I remember when I did one scenario, I had to replay the first battle five times. Yeah, I mean, if we keep encountering this level of difficulty, I might turn it down just for the sake of getting to narrative stuff faster. Mm. Um, you know, live and learn. But yeah, in the meantime, I am going to try to win this because I, I feel a gamerly compulsion to be better than the game. I, I believe in you. I think this is winnable. Maybe. No, I, this I, is winnable. This is winnable. Yeah, I'm going to let them come to us because that just seems like a better plan overall. Yeah. And then also the nice thing about Nalera is she's a, she's great for defense because um, when she when she defeats an enemy, she gets an ability called Untouchable. And so mm. whatever the next attack on her is, it won't land. It'll be blocked no matter what. And we actually have a good defensive setup here too because Bone Lance, which I can't, I don't think I can hit anyone with it right now. But it has this really nice range, and it'll hit anybody within those tiles. So, going to have him wait. All right, what do we got? Yeah, you can have that. I don't care. Ha! Huh. Can't even get through her armor. That's great. Mm. Oh, that's a big boy. I don't like that one at all. At what point? It's been a while since I've played. At what point do you anticipate enemies will stop spawning in? <laughs> Um, probably after this turn. I am okay. guessing, yeah, they, they usually are pretty reasonable about this. Okay. Though, again, higher difficulty than usual, so it could be anything. Anyway, let's get that untouchable bonus. And then let's have her use Discus. So take, oh no, we can't take him out, so that's less appealing. We probably want to start chipping away. No, actually, hmm, this is difficult because they're probably so going to come for Fadina, and Fadina is pretty damaged. Here's what I'm going to do. So thinking kind of abstractly, Peter, I think this is actually not, at least the way Nathan is playing this right now, this is not terribly dissimilar from some of the kind of puzzly games you mentioned earlier. Oh, where absolutely. yeah. Nathan um, is kind of sorting through options, trying to determine what the best course of action mm -hmm. is. And some of these courses of action, as we've already seen, will result in a total fail state, mm -hmm. uh, kind of evidence that Nathan's not good at the game, that sort of thing. Wow, okay. uh, but other courses of action will lead to kind of greater success, which is, I think, where we find ourselves now. Yeah, but mm -hmm. Mikhail, uh, do you say Mikhail or Mikhail? I, I, uh, I took Russian, so I, I just, I don't know if, you know, how... how uh, this uh, is faithful. I should be to the uh, the mother tongue. Um, it's it is such a fraught question for me because oh. when I was when I was younger, I went by Michael and Mike. Uh, mm -hmm. I yeah, everyone in the office calls me Mikhail. At home, nobody unless my parents are like extremely mad at me, and even then, I haven't really heard Mikhail. Okay. Usually, it's Misha. Oh, um, okay. So. Tons of people call me all sorts of things. Uh, and that's not even like getting into what people online call me. So <laughs> it, it honestly, so, whatever pronunciation suits you best. Okay, Mikhail, I'm going to use the uh, one I learned in Russian class. But Please. what I was going to say was, you know, when I get to a point in a game like this, where the, where the level is probably too much for me, mm -hmm. I can't go back to a lower level and try and you know power through the game i have to conquer this even if it takes me weeks mm. i mean and i'm at a slower you know learning curve than you guys are because you are so adept mm. i can't so i would have to stay here until i i i, I battle through this um which is interesting to me because this one really poses ah, this is a problem this, this looks really hard yeah this yeah, is kind no, of a making me think this is a challenge, I think, of, of Nathan's own creation, because uh, yeah. he thought for, for narrative purposes, this would be such a, a wonderful thing to tune up the difficulty. Right. Well, because uh, like the, the, the difficulty that I was on before is yeah. kind of easy. 
right. and so like it's hard to, to show, right the the drama is a little bit like more narrative driven almost entirely and i wanted there to be higher stakes but right. in this particular case it's just like yeah it, it's the the jump is a little bit too much for it to be i think streamable so i may yeah. again we kind of back. change things in a moment I will say I absolutely understand the the impulse to just keep hacking away at a game oh, or level totally. until I, you can no longer yeah, yeah. which is oh, which is very much that's like the, some of the pixel games I play and some of the yeah. other um, uh, uh, I've been stuck on a puzzle for a long time and that's why I, I'm related yeah. to that. Mm. I think in the pandemic in particular I found uh, a lot of I, I became really interested in kind of number puzzle games. Um, there is a, a a card game called Card of Darkness on the phone that I've been playing okay. a lot of. Card of uh, Darkness. Card of Darkness. Yeah, okay. there's a um, Card of Darkness. That's it's quite funny. good. It's it's very cute. It's a, kind of a thoughtful game. It it ramps up the difficulty where you learn one mechanic and you kind of have to adjust as it progressively becomes more difficult. One of my favorite games this year was Dicey Dungeons, which came out a couple of years ago, I think. But it is, uh, you know, playing on dice rolls where your attacks correspond to a, the roll of a six-sided die. Um, and there are certain levels where, you know, the developer anticipates that you've learned certain skills and mechanics and you've mastered those. And now the difficulty ramps up and you have to play almost perfectly. Um, and there were some levels in that game where I was just kind of hitting my head against them for kind of days at a time. I'd sit on the couch right before bed for like an hour or two, just like trying to knock out a level and sometimes really not making any headway. So interesting. So very Nathan, familiar feeling. Nathan, how much have you, hmm. how much do you play a game before you start recording on it? Um, I mean, it really depends on the game, right? Yeah, some games, you know, are short. Some games are long. There's some games that are, no, we don't want to do that. Go so back. with Wildermyth, how much have you played before you come online? Um, I played about 15 hours of it. Oh. Also, we win. Hey. Yeah. Woo! That was easy. Yeah. Yeah, that was definitely, <laughs> I think it's a matter of, like, it's all about walling wisely. I mean, we'll see how the next battles go. Um, let's see. Apply it here. Yeah, it's just a... Honestly, this is not really useful for either of these characters. Well, applies a poison to your weapon, poison enemies will take. Eh, can't hurt to have. There you go. All right. So, um, the final shriek shakes columns, bounces along causeways, his rattling legs shudder still. Don't come at me and my sister. Will, wait. <laughs> what did we just do? We just did magic, right? You felt that too? Stop talking. And here, take take the book. You basically forced us to follow you. Can you just stop and explain? Mm -mm. The softest song tickles their ears. A hum so gentle, it sounds like a windy lie. Like boughs groaning in a breeze. Like gaps in walls breathing in a gust. Time built. Are you out there? Nalera's shout is warped by sudden, sweet-smelling fog. The fog floats from everywhere. Turns archways into ogres, rubble into roaming ooze. Master Bill, please, I'm here. What are they doing, Fadino wonders? Walking? Are they searching? What are they what are they searching for? Master Bill, <laughs> wow. What are they searching for? Through the stones and fog and trees. Um let's see. And what are they doing? And what are they and oh. I mean, I don't think we should be scared by that skeleton. We're hanging out with a skeleton right now. Well, I'm walking in the forest. Hmm, yeah. Tree trunks gather around them like gawkers. Sunbeams stroke their faces. I'm not moving until someone says what that was. <laughs> we were, I don't know, somehow they, who's they? Thrixel, there must have been more of them. Okay, when you say that word, Thriskel, my body hurts. Thrixel, there, remember that book. The important thing is they're capable of, how do I say it? Oh, who's this guy? Wow, he looks like a funky alien in fun clothes. Um, capable of captivating the mind, grounding three birds with a glamour, sending them stumbling far to die. 
A rakish stranger pauses to be seen. How long had he been standing there? He offers some kind of perfunctory salute. Yes, little nest thrown deers. You might have been food for wolves and weasels, but a man happened by who bore a gift for magic, a glyphic smile, and an enduring fondness for birds. All right, who's this person? His speech glides, perfect and strange. Skimming steps whisper him nearer. Is that one of them? The Thricks will wear many disguises. This one's wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> I am not one of I'm not one of anyone, and certainly no one so unpleasant. I am called the Mothman, wheresoever I am called. I am hmm. the only one there is. His articulations are uncomfortable on the eye. Spider precise. Simply look at me. Not whole human, but half, and half better. I am man and more. He seems all right. <laughs> Seeming as a weapon, though wield it like a sword. And that is bright and that is a bright warning, pithy and true. Fortunately, as I have just finished saying, I am no Thrixel. Now forestall your misplaced animosity and listen. I found you three ensorcelled, wandering deep in the woods, removed from any reasonable realm. Where unreason reigns, Thrix will hide their aims. And that is one of mine, but you can use it. For one with my abilities, gathering you and waving away your enchantments was a trifle, a matter of politeness. And yet, the ones who cast these webs, they are not the dull drones they appear to be. They are imaginative. They expanded thought on removing you. They must have deemed the flimsy birds dangerous to their designs. So I am struck with wondering, why would they think that? You must admit, it is a curious thing. Yep, but curiosity's fine. <laughs> we can go home now, right? <laughs> also curious about, as a mothman, do you find fire hard to resist? <laughs> <laughs> It'll be dark soon. The mothman follows Nalera's eyes. I mean, well, I guess she has eyes. He lifts his glance to the shadowy leaves. And that's when Nalera leaps. Whoa. The mothman doesn't seem to hurry. And Nalera tackles air. Tell me, Mister Bill. Tell me, tear that. Tell me where Master Bilt is. Tell me, you cursed thing. Ah, dear nestling, follow your own wings back if you are brave. See what is heaping under the sh their shroud. But be warned, you may once more wish your sight sweetly veiled. He turns to leave. Hey, hey, Mothman. Why should we believe you? You were lost in the woods, my dear. Whom you believe makes no difference. Oh, and borrowed shadows flush and drip from trees to cohere around him. The forest bleeds to black. Mm. I do suggest little birds flock together. You would never guess how many owls there are in a night. Sudden as the darkness clotted, the last light smears it away. They stand where a mothman might never have been. The trees crowd thicker. Which way did we even come from? How far did we walk without knowing? I'm not really hungry. Did we eat? Did we sleep? Hey, Nalera, that name. Time built, right? You shouted it when we were in the ruin. You're what? Teacher? We're here because of you. Nalera whips around. Time built is who taught me the warrior's way, among other things. He made me hide. Hide? They begin to walk. From the Thrixel. Came and they took him. Took everyone but me. None of us know enough. Knew anything. Knowledge is the first step. Come on. I think we ought to head south and east. Just what is this? All of this. A story. I think we've landed in a story. <clears throat> ah, the sad little eaglets. I shall stitch for them a hero name. They may someday need it. Oh yeah, now we finally get, we get to name our company. Oh, we're still so early in this campaign. Okay, so we can pick one of these, but that's boring. What do we want to call this? Peter, what would you like to call our company of heroes? Oh, God. Uh, uh, something... Um... I, I, by the way, I was really taken with the Mothman. I really liked Mothman. I thought mm -hmm. that was great. That's a great character. Where, but, and before I do that, I'm just curious, does the Mothman just evaporate now or is the Mothman figure in the story? Um, I, I have a feeling he will be a figure in the story. I, I've not played this campaign yet, so I don't know for sure. Um, but I would guess given the prominence of the word Moth in the title of this story, that he'll be mm -hmm. around. Um. Um, uh, so, uh, then they give us some possible names here. Yeah. We, they're just kind of like generic fantasy names, right? They're not too exciting. 
Um, um, let's see. Uh, you can also randomize. So there's the little yeah. the, uh, the picture of the we dice. Maybe that'll give us some the soil of poetry. How's that sound? Um, the, the soil of poetry. No, the uh, uh, um, band of the guardians of poetry. No, the 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 poem of fury. Whoa, that's nice. That's, that's nice. Do you want to do that? Yes, I like that. All right, poem of fury. That's very here. Nice. Follow the tales of the poem of fury fly home little birds this game has a bit of like self-reference in it where a lot of the campaigns have moments where they kind of stop and it's like this is the beginning of a story we're about to tell you you are participating in a tale um mm. it's fun it's it's not a way i would have anticipated this game to work but it's nice yeah it definitely is oh boy i like the illustration yeah. No, the illustrations are quite um, appealing. Mm, I love yeah, them. yeah, and they they make for a style that's very like modular. So you can have all these characters who like have different characteristics and like are again kind of randomized in what ends up happening to them, but mm. they ultimately still like fit the style. They look like they fit in the world. Indeed. Um, yeah. All right. So Marson walks with his nose in the dread compendium. You can read it. Mm. Like I can read. Like I can read the weather, just looking and guessing. Was always interested in the pictures. Hmm. Burned those drawings in my brain as a kid. Saw my first Thrixel. It was like an image came off the pages. Yes, give me <laughs> yes, give me nightmares, please. And so, like, see, um, a lot of like the responses that we get from these various characters are rooted in kind of their their personalities. So, like, she's snarky, right? That's why she's been the one kind of doing joke responses to everything. Um, like if she was a character with different characteristics, if she was, you know, poetical or whatever, then she'd be responding very differently even to each of these little prompts, um, which is always really cool to me. So That's if we cool. replayed this with different characters, and we okay. might if we start losing again, then we kind of get to see that impact. Um, yeah. Also, here's a question. Where do you get that word? Thrixel. Master Time used it. Used it. Believe it's wild speech. Time came from hill painting people. Mm. One of us can do more than guess at meanings, right, Fadina? You you read old Kioran. Oh, maybe, yeah. Problem is, there's two different letterings, and I'm good with one but not the other. Need a desk and some work paper. So what are you waiting for? I'll look when I care to. Malera, something else. Why'd you go to Eldstone anyway? You went there like you had a purpose. The ruin? People said it was haunted. Gloam lights, fleeting noises, disappearances. Rumors I heard as I made my way home. It sounded like a likely spot. Storm catches their heels. In the end, I was half right. The Thrixel were there, but Master Time wasn't. It latches on long enough to leave them soaked, then runs north. It's kind of embarrassing. You're four years older than me, but you've done four times as much. You fight these lostlings, these Thrixel or whatever. You're brave. Brave is just a masking word. People have reasons. And see, she's like very, you know, political and or poetical and kind mm -hmm. of like removed from it all um mm. so again drawing on like her the the sort of personality that she has per the way that she was rolled mm. um can i have my bed shirt back <laughs> mm. Mm, sure it's damp but at least the book's dry ish last thing i'm wondering is about your magic is my memory lying you both worked magic in the ruin your mom's the lady who runs the print shop leanna fletch right does she know does she also have powers lost our mom to autumn fever four years back a lot of folks in town didn't make it. Oh, sorry. She's being childish, because it's you. Time's passed, life continued. Not even sure how to answer you, though. When do you call something magic? It wasn't like using a thing. It was almost as simple as shaking hands. Like shaking hands with creation. Right, Fadina? Hmm, no, uh, um, something feels off. Do you feel that? Uh... What do you mean off? <laughs> also, Peter Stern in chat just said, you're four times as much a skeleton as me. <laughs> that was good. What do you mean off? I don't know. Weird. The air's tensing up. Something's moving out there. Should assume the worst. So can you do magic? Do you know you how? Or can you at least fight? I can. It's got a big stick. If nothing else, you can definitely fight <laughs> with that. Did you think we did? The threat closes around them. Stay out of the way and just stay close. Predators target strays and stragglers. Wouldn't it be strange if... In that moment, Marson locks eyes with Nalera. Realization blossoms between them both. 
Oh, interesting. Oh, we could do a <laughs> now we could do a romance. Oh, okay. Yeah, we could either do a strategy or a romance. You know, the two mm -hmm. the two genders. Huh. Well, you guys are so into romance, so I think I think you got to do the romance right now. All right. I, you guys are you know really soft hearted. I can tell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're we're both very poetical. I can oh, right. That. Suddenly, romance. Can we talk? We will. We'll survive this first. All right. This one's gonna be a little bit tricky because characters recover over time, and um. Wow, Mike Hume just said that I'm the Morgan Freeman of Wildermyth narrators. I don't know about that, but I'm doing my best. <laughs> anyway, um, so the problem that we have here is that characters recover over time on the sort of overworld map that we were just in. Mm. And because we've only moved one panel or one location, Vadina has not had any time to recover. So she's still at two health, meaning we're going to have to play this real safe. Mm. Yeah. And there are a lot of enemies, too. Yeah. Um, a lot of them are in the shadows, yeah. and so our best bet, I would say, is to let them reveal themselves. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to move us all a little bit forward, just so that these two have access to more things to interfuse with. So right now, we can't even reach that guy up there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so what I think I'm going to do is put him about here, interfuse with this, splinter blast this guy. And then just kind of move everyone else around him so that it is so that he is safe. Have her go into guardian mode. That way, if anyone steps into their general proximity, she'll immediately attack them. Nice. And then um, I'm guessing that probably some enemies will come. <laughs> um, speaking in terms of. Sorry, in chat, Brian Smalley, in terms of the whole romance thing, just said maybe they mean romance of the three kingdoms. Yes, maybe that's that's what we're referring to here. Our characters are going to get into a romance of the three kingdoms in ancient, uh, what Chinese story? Yeah, Chinese it's story. a. Oh, you know, exactly. it's that for funsies, love to interfuse, mm. and then yeah, wild grasp cannot reach anything with. Oh, I can reach this guy. Okay, and we'll drag him over. Good news for me. Yeah, so he's also pinned though, so he can't move quite as well. Now we're going to start to see, uh, yeah, make sure to interfuse things before the Thrixel can. This is interesting, too, because um, the Thrixel have not been kind of the main foe in previous campaigns I've done. So I haven't had to deal with a lot of enemies that interfuse. Mm. So I'm kind of learning the way around this. But yeah, <laughs> um, as as people in chat are pointing out, you kind of you've got to like counter interfuse before they can take a thing that would be useful against you. Oh, yeah. Which is an interesting layer of strategy. Let's see. Oh, we can't reach that yet. Okay, I'm going to advance forward in... Is this a good idea? The problem is that if I step into this panel, um, Nalera will get attacked, which is a little bit annoying because this person has... or this enemy is interfused in such a way that this is going to basically... Well, no, she can move out of here. Okay. Okay. Time for some thinking. Um, Things that I can do here that would be useful... Wild Grasp again. Could interfuse something else. What is the range on this? Two damage, five range. This is Wild Grasp. I mean, one way or another, I think I want this guy to be dead before the end of this turn. And I think I can make that happen. I probably have enough within general proximity. And we also have that over there. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. What kind of damage can we do to him? We can probably finish him off with Nalera. She'll take a couple damage risky but oh and ah never mind she's not going to do that much damage to him for some reason so nathan yeah. while you're while you're sorting out strategy i have a question for peter have you ever had to review or write about a narrative that was not set in stone uh one of the like selling points of wilder myth is that a lot of the players will have unique narratives that are very different from those that other players have. Sure. Uh, and I'm curious, yeah, if you've ever worked on something that kind of functions similarly. Yeah, well, in a much more rudimentary sense, and, and, the, and, the, and the options are, you know, more linear because there just aren't that many things that actors can memorize. But yes, I've done many shows where, you, where the audience chooses the, uh, the path of the, of the narrative. 
and certainly um, uh, uh, picks the ending. Uh, there is a great musical called The Mystery of Edwin Drood, which was based on an unfinished Dickens novel in which it, there was a murder and the audience uh, in this musical, uh, because the Dickens never solved it, the audience has to solve it. And it's uh, really cool uh, because there are multiple endings with multiple songs that have to be uh, uh, integrated into the show based mm -hmm. on on which uh, which uh, uh, character is the mur is the victim and which is the murderer at the end of uh, the evening. So mm -hmm. yes, and so that's and that is a a great interactive feature. Nothing, you know. So that yes, so I recognize kind of that uh, dramatic notion in in what you guys are playing out here and how this is uh, uh, done in in in, in, in Wildermuth and other games. Uh, mm. Very similar, um, and more and more today. There's a lot more effort being made to integrate now gameplay into theater. Uh, that's happening more and more. You're seeing more and more shows that are trying to emulate what, uh, what is done in, in uh, uh, there have been games that have incorporated years ago, Dungeons and Dragons, for example, mm -hmm. but other games um, more, you know, and I'm seeing more and more of that in, in, in the, um, on stages. Gotcha. And have those integrations in your experience been successful experiments? Is that's that great, you yeah. think like a, a flourishing field yeah. of yeah. experimentation? Yeah, that's a great question, uh, 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 Mikhail. Uh, that that uh, sometimes it, it is a little hokey because it's it's hard to make that as dynamic as it is um, graphically uh, in a game. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, I find that it, I think it's going to be more and more of that that's happening on a on a because personal involvement in story is becoming more demand. It's more in demand by I think younger audiences. They want to feel part of the story. They don't want to just mm. have observers. So I'm mm. seeing. I'm even seeing more things, more shows where it's even one performer and one audience member in a room together. They create a show together. Even I've had a couple of those experiences over the pandemic. So yeah, that's happening. It's an interesting question. Uh, I, I think that theater makers could learn things from from um, from, from games like even games like Wildermuth. Uh, you know, not particularly Nolera. I mean, she's a little uh, an extreme character. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think we want to see many skeletons with wings. However, mm. uh, I see I can see the applications uh, uh, expanding, not contracting in my field. Mm. It's a really it's really cool. Uh, the language of Wildermyth is really a special and very different from theater language. Uh, you know, even from Nathan's narrative, I, I'd love to hear this narrated with two voices to, to, to get the real sense of how these characters, you know, Nathan's doing a lot of the work here mm. of, of telling the story. Uh, but I can hear even in his um, narration the, the, the various voices of these characters. And the more they sound like Different characters, the better the game is. I think mm -hmm. they don't yeah, all. Definitely. So there's actually an interesting question in the chat uh, that I think kind of flips something you were saying on its head. Do you think there's any great work of drama that games could pull from or should oh. pull from in some capacity? That's a really. That's a great question. It's a really, really good question. I think. Um, I think it'd be a great game. A great game would be a Hamlet game in which um, the, the characters of Hamlet are uh, have have more options that you can that, you know mm. that you guys that 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 we decide how this how you know what happens to Hamlet whether he gets together with Ophelia whether or not he kills um, uh, hey, Claudia. It exists. It does? does it? Yeah, no. Isn't that Elsinore? Hey, you, that I'm basically Elsinore. I'm at a loss. I, I don't even know what that is. There, there's a game called Elsinore where you kind of like live out. It, it's, it is choice-based Shakespeare, and the idea is that you like live through the events of, I believe it's Hamlet, and um, you kind of like, it, you're in a loop, in a, like a time loop. So you go through and like try to do things better over and over and over. Hmm. That would be cool. I think another cool game would be a kind of Lin Manuel game in which you, you know, you create you create the musical from a, from the songs that, you know, and you could even devise the songs as you go along somehow that you, that, that, that you, you create your own uh, way through a musical. 
uh, using a, a song list by some, you know, s some subset of, of great groups. Um, that's another possibility. But I didn't know about Elsinore. Now I want to find Elsinore. Hmm. Yeah, Elsinore is a really neat game. Uh, so uh, I, we, we're probably going to lose here. I'm thinking maybe. I don't know. So far, you seem... You're I'm blocking right. a lot of damage. You're doing yeah. all right. Yeah, no, Fadina is high risk right now. Oh, yeah, Fadina's in a bad spot. Yeah. And I think that Marson can't necessarily do anything. I think he's been, like, functionally banished Oof. by, like, a spell. So that's not ideal. But I can still sort of work with this. Uh, that's fine. And then we just have her... I have to uh, I have to uh, check out here. I've got to see a show tonight, actually, in D.C. Oh. called A Strange Loop, which is actually oh. uh, yeah a really cool musical uh, that won the Pulitzer Prize. They're getting ready for Broadway. So, uh, well, I, to... I super should not have done this on higher difficulty then, because we barely got anywhere. <laughs> and now I feel quite bad. No, that's all right. I think this is a good this is a good taster. Uh, Mark now knows. What he's getting from the Wilder Myth experience. There's a chance to return and revisit this format. Also, just Mark, you can play it on your own. Go. That's true. Man, because yeah, battles are so much easier on regular difficulty. Like, we could have breezed through all this. Mm. Would have taken just like a couple minutes per battle. Ah, well, now I'm just going to kick myself. I apologize to everyone in chat. Should have done this differently. <laughs> no, all good. I think chat got some great questions out and we. Kind of talked about the the intersections of games and drama um so i think this was a blast thank you so much for for joining us mark a pleasure a pleasure i want to come back oh jesus uh i've been saying mark peter i'm so <laughs> sorry <laughs> wow that's all right mikhail i i answer to almost anything so that's you, know. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both then yeah yeah exactly all right well thanks Thanks, gentlemen. This has really been fun. I really, I'm now I want to play Wilderness some more. You should, and you should tell us about your adventures in the game. And if you end up writing anything about it, please let us know. Oh, that's yeah, a cool idea. Yeah. All right, definitely. All right, I'll see you. All right, thank you so much for joining us. Mm hmm. Thank you. I'm at least going to win this. I, I have to win. Alrighty. Yeah, no, we are I'm... now doubly embarrassed. Uh, Nathan for the gameplay choice. Me mm -hmm. for for calling him Mark. Christ. Yeah. Uh, we all get we all get one mistake in these streams. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, no, exactly one mistake. Um, let's see. I can make either of them a little tankier, but I'm gonna focus on our strengths. Um, yeah, let's see. How does this all go? Scrambling to higher ground, leaving a wake of twisted Thrixel bodies. The three of them stand, breathing hard. Late gray sun squeezes past the clouds. All gone? Think so. Getting out of here might be might be smart. While we have light? Yeah. Silence wraps their party until trudging steps start to sound like unsaid words. Nalera. Oh, man, it's going to be... Ah, romance time. Okay, well, it, it, at least this is a good place to end things um if it's dumb it's dumb but here it is nalera i want you to know that i think i've fallen for you and this is serious all right i know you probably look at me and see a clown in a dress holding a stick and talking about handshakes with the goose spattered <laughs> rocks and things but i swear i marson i am an alone person an alone woman an alone skeleton the way you phrase things is insane, <laughs> but you make me laugh. You are always a cut up. If you want, if you walk next to me, that's what I actually want. So smoldering hearts take flame, like falling embers dropped into the dark. They'll share heat until the earth blacks them out. Now this is a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is, mm. I think, a, a pretty nice place to end things because it, it feels very much like. This is the end of, I don't know, act one. It feels like if we were watching a show, the intermission would happen right now, just mm -hmm. on, now this is a nightmare. And then <laughs> musical cue, the uh, whatever the thing, the curtain, 
I can't believe I forgot the word curtain falls. Everyone starts clapping. The lights go up in the theater. You hear the, all right, everyone has a couple of minutes to go get snacks from our booth. Uh, <laughs> and then everyone gets up and stretches. So how do you feel about that, Nathan? Yeah, no, I, I feel good about that. Um, I, I also think we could like potentially do this again. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I kind of want to like, I, I find this campaign intriguing now. I, I want to keep it going in the future. Yeah. I think what, what might be fun is either to bring Peter back mm -hmm. when and if he's played Wildermyth. So kind of loop, close the loop on the conversation about mm -hmm. his perspective on the game. Um, or to just kind of keep this campaign running. Um, we can stream whenever we want. We That's can. the... That's the, the, the beauty of streams. Oh, man. Just... Here's an idea. Uh -huh. An idea that involves me doing more work, and I won't be able to do it until a couple weeks from now, but sure. uh, Wildermyth Wednesdays. Listen, uh, Alliteration. We'll have, to, we'll have to run it up the chain, but I am not against it. Wait, consider the following. Uh -huh. Wapo Wildermyth Wednesdays. Wapo Wildermyth Wednesdays. Oh, I yeah. like it. www something.com i don't know anyway you get it i wonder if does anyone own this is a total www.www.com oh i don't think anyone owns this this the domain name www sale click here to inquire all right Maybe. i don't want anyone in chat to get uh any ideas but yeah no it's ours now we have dibs yeah and if you violate dibs then um i mean well you know I don't want to like make any mm -hmm. make any out of hand threats or anything, but uh, Jeffrey Bezos will come for you. Yeah, consider yourself threatened. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll have the the extremely confusing branding for this show that no the actual content whatsoever. It'll be www.www.com the show, which mm -hmm. stands for Wapo Wildermyth Wednesdays. Uh, yeah. Yes, this this makes perfect sense in my head. I know, and it makes even more sense when you say it out loud. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I know. Peter Stern just said, like, does it make sense to restart the campaign at a lower difficulty? I think so. Um, with the added caveat, what I might do is just play this one on my own and see where I can get in it. Mm -hmm. And if it becomes a more sustainable thing, then I will, you know, make it into something that we could use for streaming. But otherwise, if we uh, continue to do things with, um, with our, with our in-house drama critic... Mm -hmm. then I I will probably yeah start a campaign on a lower difficulty. We can we can follow the Mothman a little bit more efficiently. Is there a way just last question for me, is there a way to change difficulty mid game? Um good question. I Not sort of sure. assumed that was possible, but I could be wrong. I um I, I have never tried here we go. I guess I'm gonna be in this oh, game. Yeah. Well, here you go. Nice. Wow, it was that easy all along. Yeah. All right. Now we know. Just switch back to adventurer. Yeah. It's that simple. Do Very easy. To. Yeah. That's up to you. Man, this is a great game. I love that they let it, you do that so easily. Yeah. Yeah. There's another game I was playing last night that is still under embargo for now. Um, that for whatever reason you couldn't change the difficulty mid campaign, even though it. Huh. made perfect sense to be able to do that. So yeah. more games should let you do that. And there you go. Now we're back. We've done it. Nice. Switch it back to the other difficulty whenever we want to as well. That is great. There are so many reasons that Wildermyth rules. And like that, that is yet another one. Um, oh, yeah. Also, yeah. So Peter Stern says, speaking of Bezos, shouldn't you be streaming on Twitch? Yeah, we'd like to. Um, stuff tied up in that. Maybe someday. That, yeah. that is what I will say. Um, for now, though, I think that we are probably going to uh, sign off because we we lost our drama critic, and that that just makes us so deeply sad and disheartened that we can no longer adventure for the moment. So, thank you everybody who tuned in. Hope you had a good time, even though things ended up getting kind of bogged down in battle um, because of my ill-fated choice to turn <laughs> up the difficulty. <laughs> I think and, those were uh, good yeah. opportunities to to talk to Peter and kind of yeah. raise questions so yeah, yeah I, 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 think, I, I think that uh time schedules everything else permitting we will do this again sometime soon yeah expect more streams with other folks from the post other journalists in general 
And Other Myth Wednesdays. It's a promise. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a promise. It sure could, it sure could be. It sure might be. It's All right. <laughs> okay. Anyway, see y'all later. And don't forget to read Nathan's Wildermyth story. Oh, also, last thing. Very important thing. Um, next week is Game Awards. We are doing a huge pre-show on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time, like we the normal time that we stream. Mm -hmm. um, but on Wednesday instead of Thursday, because the Game Awards are on Thursday, we're going to have guests. We're going to talk to people about the year in video games and their favorite games of the year and all sorts of other things. Um, it should be a very special one. So if y'all want to mark your calendars and tune in for that, that would be great because it's going to be a super good time. So um, with all that said, now we're actually leaving and we will see you next week.